Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. When I tell you it has been a crazy morning, y'all have been in my DMs, y'all have been hitting me up. Y'all want me to go in and spill the tea on all this Richard Pryor, Paul Mooney drama. Honey, I heard about this yesterday, but I want to sit back, sip slow, and watch how everything played out. Um, and I've been doing that, so I want to go ahead and give you guys a small breakdown. So what's going down is this, okay? <laughs> Make sure y'all have y'all's teacups ready, honey, because this tea is Illuminati hot, okay? That's how hot this shit is. <laughs> So anyways, what's going down is that basically um, Comedy Hype, they did an interview with a man named Rashawn Khan. Let me be the first to say this. I, I've never heard of this man before. Didn't know who he was, right? And so they did the interview with him. And in that interview, this man Rashawn was spilling on all types of old ass 70s and 80s tea, honey. And I was here for it until he got to the part about Paul Mooney having sex with Richard Pryor's son. I was like, wait, what? I had to clutch my invisible damn pearls. Y'all go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. JoJo Dancer on, the relationship became fragile. Okay because Paul Mooney had f***ed Rich's son by that time. Okay. And he violated. And that's any man uh, if you violate their children like that. Mm -hmm. So Paul took advantage of, of the situation. Mm -hmm. And so from there on, whatever Paul Mooney was to Richard, and there was a time that Paul Mooney was Rich's friend. You know, I acknowledge that. Um, which is why the gay community really couldn't say anything mm -hmm. they attempted to about Richard because Paul Mooney was his friend mm -hmm. and they laughed. So when Paul did what he did, it was a violation of friendship first and then my son, you know. Um, right. And in some circles that's supposed to be dealt with. So. Did, was there ever a conversation to retaliate against that? Yes, yes, yeah, of course. How, to what extent? To the extent of, of Richard didn't want him on the planet no more. He, he shared it with me and he said he wanted somebody uh, killed. Mm. And Richard, that wasn't his conversation, so I just attribute that he must be high right now. Mm. And I, you know, it's Friday. This is the high day, so it's Friday, Saturday. Mm. Sunday, he's, you know, by Wednesday he'll be straight. Because mm. I knew the pattern. And, and I asked him again because Richard never spoke like that. Mm -hmm. And I just said, do you remember what you said to me last week? And he was, he was on it so clear, it was like, okay, it's serious. And so then I asked him, what is it about? He said, a million dollars, I want somebody killed. And I was like, damn, I'm not a killer. I'm not that person, but I did give it thought. I know some people, some damn well, okay. you know, and the biggest problem with those people would have been you saying a million dollars to them because they would have did it for like 10 grand. Money. All right, so you guys just watched that snippet of that interview. I was not ready. When I tell you, I was shook it like, hold up, rewind that shit back. Because Paul Mooney had f***ed Richard's son by that time. What the hell did he just say about Paul Mooney and Richard Pryor Jr.? The hell? I could see Paul Mooney and Richard Pryor fucking. I never would have imagined he had sex with the damn son, too. What in the Illuminati bullshit is going on here? I know Paul Mooney's like, damn, who the hell let the damn cat out the damn bag, okay? So anyways, there was a lot of speculation yesterday. It was trending all over Twitter. You know, the woke, mushmouth community was shooketh. There was all types of conspiracies. Some people feel like, okay, Paul Mooney done pissed off the wrong people. They're trying to taint his legacy like Bill Cosby. Other folks was like, I've been told you he was gay, but y'all try to ignore it because he be talking all that woke shit. <laughs> so I don't know, but Twitter, honey, black Twitter was a mess yesterday, but I was here for a bitch. So this is my thing. 
Initially, when the reports came out, it was being reported as if Richard Pryor Jr. was really young. So I'm like, damn, what kind of perverted shit is this? Because I'm thinking, you know, it's a kid that's getting, you know, sexed by Paul Mooney. But if you do the timeline, um, the guy mentioned that it was during JoJo Dancer. And they were also saying that when the hit was placed on Paul Mooney, Richard Pryor the hit stopped because Richard Pryor burned himself, which we know was in the 80s. So if you go back and do the math at that time, Paul Mooney would have been 39 and Richard Pryor Jr. would have been about 19. So he wasn't technically like a little kid, like 12, 13. He was technically an adult and he was old enough to consent to sex. But that's still weird as fuck, okay, that you're fucking your friend's son. Mm. But I digress. Okay, so the whole situation is just really crazy. Um... Now, as far as the whole sexuality thing, it's not really a secret because as we all know a few months ago, because I did the video on it, Quincy Jones old ass honey said, you know what? I'm not going to be here much longer anyway. So I'm about to spill all this tea. And Quincy Jones was telling it all about how Richard Pryor, Marlon Brando, and all these Hollywood people was just fucking each other, fucking, you know, dogs and cats and mailboxes. Honey, if they, if, 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 if they could stick their pen in it, they was here for it. Okay. <laughs> Quincy Jones was spilling all that damn tea that I wasn't ready for. So I wasn't really shocked about this. And then I, um, somebody on Instagram let me know about this roast that Richard Pryor did back in the day on Paul Mooney. And in that roast, it made me uncomfortable. I was like, I've never seen this roast before. It made me very uncomfortable. He was talking about Paul Mooney, you know, having sex with white men, and letting them do stuff in his mouth. I, bitch, I wasn't ready for that. I said, what kind of sexual deviant roast is this shit? Anyways, y'all go ahead and check out this snippet. And I'm gonna come back with the rest of my damn commentary. Many years ago on the Red Fox show, we started writing together and we walked into the office with the white man and Paul didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, what he did was sucked his dick. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, Paul had a sense of humor. He didn't let him come in his mouth. <laughs> next, the next day, just don't tell him about Marapa stuff. Next, uh, next, uh, next I moved, uh, Paul was with me once when I first fucked my first faggot. <laughs> And he's been holding that over my head for two years. I fucked a faggot. I just want to say it now so nobody else can tell. Honey. All right, so y'all just seen that roast and Paul Mooney was laughing and looking kind of uncomfortable, okay? But I always thought Paul Mooney kind of went both ways, but he's adamant that he's straight, but you know, it is what it is. Now, what else is going on that's putting some validity to this story that Rashawn Khan is telling is that Richard Pryor's um, wife um, was on Twitter and she basically confirmed this. So this is what she said. She replied back to this tweet. The tweet says Richard Pryor wanted to have Paul Mooney killed for sleeping with his son, Richard Pryor Jr. According to Richard Pryor's bodyguard, Richard Pryor Jr. was a little boy at the time. Wow, wow. So she comes on and she says, true, Richard Pryor Jr. confirmed this at the luncheon I gave at Richard's funeral service. He announced to the entire restaurant full of guests. I have it on tape. Then she goes on to say, It happened during the JoJo Dancer shoot. Richard Pryor sent Paul Mooney home when he found out. Then she says, It's on DVD. We filmed the event. No means to edit. If you don't believe me, I don't give a fuck. Not life. Ask Richard Pryor Jr. and Rashawn. So that is what the wife is saying. She's confirmed that this did happen. But like I said, if you do the timeline of JoJo Dancer, he was not a small child. He was at least 19 years old. Not saying that it was okay, but we need to put everything in context. I'm not going to call Paul Mooney a child molester if this wasn't technically a child, okay? But the entire situation is very disturbing. But I have to look at this from a lot of different angles, okay? One, why is this just now coming out, okay? Who the fuck is Rashawn Khan? And why is he out here spilling all this tea, okay? And what I've noticed with a lot of 
black men in the industry, especially ones who you want to call woke or who have done things for the community, it seems like there's some type of, you know, effort to try to taint or destroy their legacy. And I'm not saying that this is through no fault of their own, but I find this funny. You know, we can go back to the Bill Cosby case and, you know, other cases. I feel like there is something there where they're trying to attack, you know, a lot of these black icons. Because a lot of people look at Paul Mooney as an icon. He's a truth teller. You know, he doesn't care. He's going to say what's on his heart, what's on his mind. Um, Now, I believe this. You know, Hollywood is a weird place, like I always tell you guys. I don't think this is necessarily a lie. I can see this happening, you know, because like I said, Richard Pryor has always been honest about him sleeping with transsexuals and men and you know for a while he even had a boyfriend you know he's very open about that which is very rare for somebody especially a black man to be very open about his sexuality and his sexual exploits especially back then in the 70s and and 80s where a lot of that was looked down upon okay so I could definitely see this happening okay but I also see a lot of opportunists because again, why is this just now coming out? And the fact that this man, Rashawn Khan, is also trying to promote his book, that says a lot too. Because when you're having to spill tea about somebody else's sexual exploit, at that point in time, I also have to give you the side eye because now you're being messy just simply to sell your book. At the end of the day, this is not Rashawn Khan's story to tell. Nor is it Richard Pryor's wife's story to tell. Last time I checked, Richard Pryor Jr. is a grown-ass man in his 50s, and he's also openly gay. So if he wanted to share that about his personal life, if he wanted to talk about, you know, the times him and Paul Mooney were together, whatever happened, that's Richard Pryor's Jr. story to tell, not Rashawn Khan. So in my personal opinion, I feel like Rashawn Khan is definitely being messy. He's looking to sell his book and, you know, wasn't his story to tell. All right, you guys, we have some breaking news that just appeared. Somebody just sent this to me. Um, TMZ just broke this about 30 minutes ago. This entire situation is getting crazier and crazier. You know how I was just saying this is um, Richard Pryor Jr.'s story to tell. He needs to speak on this until I hear from him. I'm taking everything else, you know, that's being said by other people. I'm giving them the side eye. Well, now TMZ just caught up to Richard Pryor Jr. And he's not only confirming that the two of them were together, he's stating that Paul Mooney straight up uh, molested him. So if what he's saying is true, that means that Paul Mooney was messing with him way before JoJo Dancer, okay? So he might have been grooming him and molesting him, but then it just happened to come out during JoJo Dancer. So this is just really disturbing. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this clip. Go ahead and check it out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I want to talk to you about the, uh, the claims from Rashawn Khan that you and Paul Mooney had a sexual relationship back in the 80s. Thank you. Is there any truth to that? I know that Paul Mooney's denied it. Well, whatever happened in my life, uh, it happened when I was young, uh, way way before the 80s. Okay. So, okay, so was it a consensual relationship? How could, how could any relationship be consensual if I was a teenager? Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it was, it was a long time ago. Um, yeah. And Paul, Paul Mooney's denied the claim, so do you have anything you want to say to him? Well, I, no, I really have nothing to say at all about the situation. Were you aware of the of the alleged hate that your father put out on Paul Mooney? Uh, that Rashawn Khan claims. No, I'm done. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So now Paul Mooney's reps are once again talking. And so TMZ reached out to the rep, and this is what the rep is saying today, okay? So they're saying Paul Mooney's rep is responding to Richard Pryor Jr.'s suggestion that he was molested by the comedian as a teen. She doubled down on the initial denial saying the timeline of the events simply don't add up, especially since Richard Sr. and Paul were hanging out as late as 1999. And then she provided a photo. The rep also notes this. If something like this had occurred, there's no way they'd been cool at this point in his life. The photo was taken nearly 20 years after the alleged incident. The rep also points out that Richard Pryor Jr. does not name Paul Mooney as his alleged abuser in the clip that we posted. She's right. He does not say Paul Mooney's name. All right, so you guys just saw the video. You guys also heard what the rep had to say. So this entire situation is getting very, very sticky, and it's getting really bad, okay? Um, at this point, I don't know what to think, but when there's smoke, there's definitely fire.
Like, let's keep that real. You know, he did not say Paul Mooney's name, but obviously he knows that people are coming to him to ask about Paul Mooney. They're not asking about other people that may have molested him. He knows the viral story right now is concerning Paul Mooney. So I think even though he didn't say Paul Mooney's name, he's definitely alluding to Paul Mooney having been his molester. So this entire situation is just really sad and really disturbing. But again, when you're dealing with Hollywood, which is a very deviant place, if you're not a strong person, a lot of deviant things go on. You know, you have people who sell themselves, they sell their children looking for a shot at fame. I mean, there's just a lot of sexual deviancy. And we've seen more and more of that come out in the past few years with the Harvey Weinstein situation, the Bill Cosby allegations, Jeffrey Epstein, you know, recently. So, you know, the rabbit hole definitely goes deep. I'm going to definitely keep my eye on this story, but this entire situation is crazy. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation concerning Richard Pryor's bodyguard coming out, spilling the tea, his ex-wife confirming it, and now, as of today, Richard Pryor Jr. basically alluding to Paul Mooney molesting him. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. Deuces. <laughs>